Hello again, Blenderheads, and welcome to this Sculpting Score Bunny tutorial. Actually, we're well past the sculpting phase now. We are now up to texturing because we did the UV mapping in the last lesson. Now, if you were paying attention in the last lesson, you might have noticed that I kind of messed up. If we go and have a look at the UVs here, you can see that I've got a couple of these feet uh, islands here kind of hanging out over the edge, which is not going to do our texturing any good. So just to start off with, I'm going to quickly wiggle these around a little bit and see if we can't um, find something that's a little bit better for us. Uh, I think for the most part, we can just kind of shuffle all of this down. Um, I might actually try moving these across into here a little bit. Oh, in fact, no, you know what? Let's, let's grab this because this is the inside of the mouth and it's really not going to be doing all that much for us. So we can shrink it down a little. Then let's go and grab all of these and just shuffle all of these down. In fact, I might just make these a tiny little bit bigger. Now I've got heaps of room in which to move all of this down. Uh, I might, can I split these off? I'd really like to keep them side by side if I can. Actually, this is a little unconventional. just kind of shuffle these around, I can get back a lot of space and that's really quite nice. I'm going to put the legs down here, might make those a little bit bigger. Now hopefully, let's rotate this one 90 degrees, actually let's rotate it the other way. Go and block it in there, grab that one. And if anything, I can possibly still make these a little bit bigger. Kind of got this big gap in here that I'm struggling to get rid of. And I'd really like to because it's not really helping us in any way. same time this is not a bad layout. I might just uh, deal with that gap there it's not it's not um, optimal but I'd like to move on with texturing because we've got a little bit to talk about here. So first of all let's get rid of this uh, checkered texture here so let's go over to materials over here you can hit uh, F3 to bring that up. And let's just get rid of those because we don't need that anymore. Go over to our principal shader and hit Control T, uh, assuming that you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, which you really should because it's awesome. Now I'm going to go and create a new texture, and I'm actually going to crank this up to just uh, to 2K, just because I like nice big textures, and it's always easier to shrink a texture than it is to uh, to try and upscale it. I'm going to go and make this predominantly, well, completely white to start with because Score Bunny is white and we'll just hit OK. And now we have a nice white texture to work with. Now, first thing I'm going to do very, very quickly is jump over to our image editor and make sure that I've got this uh, currently untitled texture. We're just going to give this a proper name, call it Score Bunny underscore diffuse. And I'm immediately going to go and save it because Blender is a little bit of a pain when it comes to that. Uh, and you can see I've been messing around with this before, so I'm just going to save over the top of this. This was a texture that didn't work for me because I didn't have my UV set up correctly. All right, so we've got all of that set up now. Let's jump in and start doing a little bit of painting. Now, I'm going to go and turn on my subdivision modifier here. Just make sure that it's only set to one in the viewport. Otherwise, we just start getting a little bit a little bit sluggish and there we just have too much wireframe going on there so I'm going to go and jump into the front view in fact I'm just gonna go and split this window I'm going to go and bring up our original score bunny reference here because I just wanted to show you what colors we're going to be working with and honestly there's really not a lot so we're going to be coloring in the ears and the feet 
and just a little bit on the nose here and then we've got the band-aid the uh, little necktie thing here in his eyes which will kind of be their own separate things so let's start on the ears here and I want to try to get these uh, straight lines that uh, Squirrel Bunny has here so to do that let's jump over to texture paint mode and you can see that's gone and set that so let's uh, let's actually set this lower one to our reference and those UVs are kind of annoying so let's where is it uh, display texture paint UVs that'll get rid of those I'll just zoom out on that so you can see what's happening here so I want to draw these straight lines let's go over to our tools here uh, I'm going to go and use the eyedropper tool here and select this orange I'm going to go down to our color palette make a new color palette and add that so that we've got that uh, for use later on going to go to our stroke change from space to line and that will allow us to draw lines like this now you can see that that's kind of coming in a little bit faded so I'm going to go undo go back up here and make sure that our strength is set to 100 or to 100 percent I noticed then that our symmetry wasn't turned on let's make sure that that's turned on and let's have another crack at this so we want this to be just just above the uh, little yellow parts so that's probably just above here somewhere probably along this line here if I go like that you can see that that's now working but if you look over here on our uh, UV map you can see that these are the backs of the ears and we haven't painted on the backs that's a little bit annoying we'd really like to be able to get this all in one go and just make sure that all of our lines actually match up on the front and the back otherwise that can be a little bit annoying so to do that, you need to go down to options and you need to turn off occlude and backface culling. So now if we go and draw our line across here, you can see that yes, it's gone to the front and the backs, but we still have one last little problem. You can see if we turn on the side here, we haven't quite got all the way to the edges. Uh, and this was really, really annoying. This took me about an hour to track down exactly what the problem was. But if you just go to fallout and you go to normal fall off, it's really quite hidden. This angle here refers to the angle of the faces, uh, the faces of your model here that are facing towards the camera. So at the moment, it's painting anything that's got a 80 degree facing angle, and these things are pretty much 90 degrees to the camera. So we want to change this to 90. Now, when we go and draw our little line across here, you can see that that seems to oh, that, that's just a little bit of a highlight. I was worried it hadn't gone all the way there, but no, that looks like it's worked all the way. And in fact, if we zoom in on here. You can see that yes it is actually just going slightly over the edge of our UV map which is what we want um, that slight going over the edge here refers to the bleed which is currently set to two pixels probably a good idea to leave that on so that's now worked for us and I'm now going to go back to space for a moment and finish coloring the tops of these because of our occlusion turned off this will now paint the backs just make sure that we get everything so it's a little bit there that we might have missed and that's pretty good so now if we go back to the front let's get this slightly uh, lighter orange so we'll change this back to line and we've got our color palette saved here so we can now go and grab our eyedropper tool again and grab something a little bit lighter make sure to save it zoom in a little bit here and probably take it from about here draw the line across and it looks like there's maybe a little bit of white in between there I'm just gonna undo that and just go a little bit higher make sure that we just go over the top of um, that dark orange just a little bit and that looks pretty good uh, and as you can see that's gone all the way around the back so I'm happy with that so we've got that saved let's go and grab this yellow color now uh, we will change this back to space and we want to remember to turn on our occlude and back face culling while we do this otherwise we'll be drawing on the back of the ears we don't want that so let's just go in and this yellow bit kind of matches up with that top darker orange and these are fairly thin so I kind of want to go from here and just sort of go around and come down to about there and circle back up uh, I want this to come to a little bit more of a point so I might just try redrawing that and I think that's about what I want I'm just going to turn these overlays off for a minute so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better and just fill in that gap it looks like I might have missed a tiny little dot there which is 
kind of cute. So this is why, first of all, let's save that one. This is why we saved our palette before, so we can quickly grab that and just go over the top of that. Doesn't seem to have done on the other side, which is a little weird. So that gets the ears done. That was pretty quick. Now we want to work on the feet and we want to use this same dark orange color. Now, if we go from the top here, you kind of see that we're kind of going to be drawing onto the face if we do that. It's a little bit annoying and we've got the same problem if we go from the bottom. So we're going to have to kind of put the camera somewhere around here. I'm just going to put my overlays back on and um, draw it from about here rather than from one of our regular views. And I reckon across this line here would be good. And you can see that I've messed up again. I forgot to turn my occlude on and off. I'll just turn that back and redraw that line. Just make sure that that's gone all the way around. Looks like it has. I'm gonna leave those off for now while I go and change this back to space because that'll allow me to paint through the toes because trying to get in between those toes is a little bit of an annoyance. Just make sure that we maintain that nice crisp line. And I think that's pretty good. So the only thing we've got left to do now is this cute little button nose. So let's go and grab our eyedropper tool again and grab the nose. I think that's okay. Now, once again, make sure that we turn our occlude and back face culling back. I'm gonna go and save this color. I actually think that that nose might actually be the same as that. It's a little hard to tell because it's a little bit pixelated, but these look very, very similar. Anyway, I'm just gonna go in and paint this. And actually, I actually don't like that. I, I think we're getting a little bit of bleed coming off the um, off the band-aid here, so I might still just push this a little bit more towards the pink, just because I like that a little bit more. And that, I think, is a little bit nicer. Just try to follow these lines a little bit. I'll just turn off our overlays to make sure that I've got everything. And I have missed a couple of little spots there. I'll make sure this is a nice smooth edge. And we'll make sure that we save that one. I might just go and remove that one. And I'm just gonna go and create a white one, just so I can push that backwards just a little bit. pink just being a little bit precious here and I think that's pretty good and the only other thing that we want to do is the inside of the mouth which is going to be a little bit difficult to do from this angle so instead I'm going to jump over to our uh, texture uh, our UV map over here and just zoom in I know that this is the interior of our mouth so I'm just going to go and swap it over into paint mode and I like this color I think we can use this for the mouth interior and I'm just going to go and paint that little bit there. Now I've kind of messed around with this before and I know that if we go and have a look at the inside of the mouth we've kind of got this really sharp line here now and I, I really want this mouth, to, this pink bit to come forward a little bit more so to do that we're actually going to have to do a little bit of painting on the lips here. And as I say, I've messed with this before and I think I want to come out, I think it's four or five um, edge loops. So one, two, three, four. Let's start with four. And just paint in a loop around there. And it doesn't look like it's coming through onto the lips yet. So we might need to come just a little bit further out. Just zoom in on here and go, yeah, I think we want to come out a fifth. And there you go. You can start to see we're getting a little bit of pink starting to, to kind of come through there. That's sort of what we want. So now I'm going to switch over to my soften tool and I might just crank the strength up on this. I always find it's a little bit too soft. Uh, it, it doesn't soften it enough. It doesn't blur it enough. And I'm just going to 
go over the top of this, which doesn't actually seem to be working. I might try doing it in the 3D view. I'm actually getting some kind of weird results here, but now it seems to be working a little bit better. And you can see that it's blurred quite nicely on the inside now. Looks like there's some little bits that I might have missed. But I think that's okay. From a distance, you can't quite see it. And as you get really close, you can start to see that there's a little bit of a color change. I'm just going to go back down here. Go back to my paint tool. I think that blurring has kind of just messed that up a little bit. And that should patch that up. Okay, make sure that you save your image again because uh, Blender does not save images automatically yet. I'm really hoping that that's a feature that will be implemented in the near future. The number of times that I've lost, uh, lost work because of that drives me crazy. So I'm gonna bring back the Band-Aid and I'm gonna bring back the Neck Jewel here. Uh, now this, you're looking at it, this here, this actually looks a lot thicker on the original image. So I might just tweak our modifiers ever so slightly. It's not gonna be on the shrink wrap, although, I might just offset it. Ever so slightly. Uh, I think that's actually okay where it is. I'm going to thicken it up a little bit more. And I'm going to add a little bit of a bevel here to this uh, to these creases. So if I go and grab the inner and outer and just kind of push those up, you can see it gets a little bit more square. I'm gonna go with something at about, around about 0.8. And I think our subdivisions are kind of okay. Now this um, neck jewel thingy here, this red color is basically the same as this orangey red here. So I'm gonna go back into texture paint mode just briefly. I'm going to go to our, make sure we go to the draw tools here. I'm gonna go down to our color palette and select that. Now if I just mouse over this and go control C for copy, if I go back here and let's jump over to material mode, create a new material. If I go to the base color now and go control V, we can paste that exact same color in there, which is really handy. And I'm going to drop the roughness considerably, probably about point, let's go 0.15, just so that's got a little bit more shine to it. Because I don't know exactly what it is, but I'm gonna say that it's some sort of jewel. So let's make it shiny. Speaking of which, I might just go back to Score Bunny himself and dramatically reduce the specularity. You can see he's kind of a fuzzy little dude. So same deal with the Band-Aid. Uh, if I just make sure that that's saved. I seem to have accidentally drawn a little dot in there. Can't actually see it on the model, but I don't like it being there. I'm just gonna drop back into texture paint mode, which we needed to do anyway. Grab the white here. I'm just going to make sure that we're in paint mode and just Get rid of that. I don't know where it is, but I don't think it should be there. Let's resave that. And just go back to view. Okay, so this band aid is the same color as the uh, inner part of his ears. So if I select that yellowy kind of thing and again go copy, go to the band aid, go create a new material and go paste, you can now see that we get that exact color. And like we did with the little neck jewel here, I think I might just add a little bit more bevel to this. So let's just go in and tweak our modifiers. I'm just going to go and make this a little bit thicker and maybe offset it a little bit more. I think that's quite nice. And grab the inner and outer and just add a little bit more bevel, not too much, somewhere about there. And I think that's quite nice. In, in our original image here, this is a very, very flat color. I mean, this is very, uh, very, very cartoony, toon shading esque sort of stuff here. So, I mean, this band aid here does match that, but we're going to something that's a little bit more realistic. So, I think I'm just going to add a little bit of extra detail to this band aid. I just pull over a Google search that I did before. You can see that these band aids have tiny little holes in them, either holes or well, I think, they're, I think they're mostly holes. Sometimes it's just a little bit of a bump map. So I think we're going to have a play and try and get something a little bit more like that. Just make this a little bit bigger so we can see. And again, I'm just going to go Control T and create a new texture coordinate. In this instance, I think I might actually go with generated rather than UV. And we're not actually going to be plugging this into the base color. We're going to be plugging this into a bump map. 
I just go open. And if I go to my textures folder, you can see I've got a whole heap of stuff I've collected over many years. Under this miscellaneous stuff here, I've just got little circle shapes and a few other random textures. I'm just gonna grab this one. And if we hold down Control Shift and click on that, we get a, a preview of it. So I'm going to scale this up a little bit, probably to about 0.2, uh, just so these are actual circle shapes. And then if I grab all three of them at once and scale, we can get a whole heap of these. I actually think I need to scale that up even a little bit further. Let's go with about 50 by, whoops, by 30, not three. And I think that should be okay. Just go and have a quick look at our reference here and yeah, that, that seems about right. In fact, if I just look at these, you can see that they're kind of offset. They're not in this perfect grid. And that seems to be true of all of these. So I might just go back here and grab this one instead. Because I just think that's a little bit, might be a little bit better for our purposes. Because we've got more of them there. I'm just going to scale that down a little bit. Let's go with about 30 by 15 by 15. And that should give us something a little bit nicer. Let's go and plug that into the height. Plug that into the normal. No doubt we'll have to make that a little bit smaller. In fact, these are popping out, so let's go invert. Now they're popping in. And let's just reduce that probably about 0.3. We want it to be fairly subtle. And I think that just gives it a little bit more interest. Uh, you can also see that we're getting a little bit of distortion around the edges here. That's probably not too big a deal when you consider how far away this will be, but we can fix that by going to box under here which then projects this uh, texture from all sorts of different angles. Now that's kind of squishing it a little bit there. We can just blend that in a little bit. Let's go to about 0.25. We're going to need to uh, adjust our scale here. I think this will be on the, is this on the Z? If I reduce that, yeah, there we go. So now if I just pull that back, let's go with about there. In fact, that blend is kind of making things a little worse. And that's not perfect, but I think that that's heaps better than it was before. So I might go with two there. And I think we're good with the Band-Aid. So the last thing we want to tackle here is the eyes. And this one may take a little bit of extra work just because these are eyes that work really well in 2D, don't work so well in 3D. So let's have a quick play with those. So let's just pull their uh, material window back down here. And let's go and select the eyes. Now at the moment, I've just got a mirror applied to these. I'm going to go and apply that and separate these two so that we've got individual objects. So separate by loose parts. And I might just go and reset their transformations and set their origin to the center of mass. Uh, and then go median point because at some point we're probably going to want to be able to rotate these things around. So let's go and create a brand new material. I'll just make sure that these are sharing the same material. Use Control L to bring up this linking thing and just click materials. And now if we just jiggle that, you can see that we've got the same material on the eyes there. Now to get this to work, we're going to want to use a gradient texture here. We're also going to need a color ramp just so we can fiddle with our colors a little bit. And I'm also going to hit Control T just so we can bring these up and make sure that we're using UV here. Which raises a good point, we haven't UV mapped these things yet. So I'm just gonna go in here, go to the front view and go project from view bounds. And I'll do that for both of these. If I just drop over to UV editor here, you can see we've just got this perfect um, circle shape. So it's just projecting it all the way through. So now if we go and pull that up and pull our black a little bit closer, you can see we start to get this line going through. That's because we're using linear here. We don't actually want to use linear. We want to be using spherical. And you can see now we start to kind of get this sphere shape, but it's going down to the bottom right hand corner. That's because Blender its UV coordinates kind of start down here, so it's actually creating a circle in this corner and expanding it outwards, which is not particularly helpful for what we're trying to do. So to do that, we want to offset its location. We want to set it to 0.5 across the X and 0.5 in the Y. 
So to do that, we just go negative. Uh, usually you'd go 0.5, but you can see here I've got centimeters. So in our case, just going to go negative 50 centimeters. You can see that all of a sudden becomes completely white. And if we drag this black in, you can see we start to get something that kind of looks a little bit like a pupil. So I'm just going to go back to our image editor here and make sure that we've got a score bunny here so we can kind of look at our colors. So I'm going to start by creating this uh, little orangey bit here. It matches his ear color. So we should be able to go back into our texture paint mode here and find our color palette and just copy that across. Go back to our eyes here. Let's go and change my texture for me. We don't want that. It's just so we can keep looking at the eyes and I want to change the white bit here to that color. So let's just go paste. And you can see that, that works quite nicely. I'm just going to take our overlays off here. Now he kind of looks like a scary demon bunny right here. That's just because they're so perfectly centered. So now we can go and grab, I think it'll be our Y here and we can shift this until we get something that kind of looks a little bit more like that. And maybe we just expand this a little bit. So that takes care of our little orange part. We want to add this white part here, which is um, supposed to be a 2D version of a, uh, of a specular highlight. We can basically just go and grab all of this again, duplicate it, go to our red bit here, and let's just make that 100% white. And I'll just uh, shift control click on this so we can start to see our little white bit here, because we're going to want to do the same thing. And in this case, we're going to want to shift it up somewhere about there and make it considerably smaller in this case and maybe just shift it down a little bit further. So now we've got our two different colors all we need to do is go and grab a mix RGB node combine these change that to add now you can see we're getting both of our colors in the one uh, and in fact I'm going to swap these around just so as I play with my factor, I can determine just how much specular highlight I want in there. So if we now go and plug that into our base color and connect our principal shader, you can see we start to get something like this. Now, in, in 2D, you can kind of get away with just doing some flat colors. In 3D, you kind of need to build the eyes a little bit more detailed. So in our case, I'm going to get rid of both the um, the specularity and the roughness because we really don't need them too much. Uh, and then I'm going to go and select our eyes, duplicate them, right click to snap them back into the same place. I'll now go into edit mode and I'll make sure that we're working from individual origins here and I'll just scale them up ever so slightly. Now I will go and create a new material. And this is going to be the uh, shiny outside of our eyes. So we'll make sure that I've copied this across. We'll get rid of the roughness completely. Let's just go back into um, material preview so we can see a preview of this. And we want to crank our transmission all the way up. Now you can see here what we get is perfect reflection, which is kind of not quite what we want. So to fix that, at least if you're using Eevee, Go down to your material slot and just make sure that you check screen space reflections for that material. And now you can see that we get our uh, refractions working. Keep in mind that you will also need to turn on screen space reflections and refraction in particular. Um, I've kind of got mine set up so that this is always on by default because there's never really any scenario where I don't want to use it. Now we can kind of just dial these in a little bit. I think I might just shrink this little red bit, tiny bit. And maybe just shrink the white a little bit too. So in terms of materials and texturing, that's it. We have a fairly well finished character here. So in the next lesson, we're going to tackle something a little bit exciting. We're going to go over how to create fur on this character before finally going in and posing him. So I will see you in the next lesson for adding fur.